This is Jenny Lyles again. Uh, welcome to Out of My Mind by Jennifer D. Lyles, MSW, LCSW. Thank you to Jean Rosner, my husband Jason, my sons Ryan and Sean, my daughter-in-law Liz, and all my children of the heart, including but not limited to Addie, Cortez, Tessa, Rachel, and all the rest. Um, I'm also grateful to my Patreon sponsors and those who tip me at PayPal, as well as those who don't have the money to do that, but are benefiting from these videos as well. And I'm also grateful to those in the world who are striving and surviving every day, even when things get bad. Today, I am talking about executive function again. This is the second of what probably will be four on the executive function issue. Now I'm going to pause this just long enough. I'm going to make sure I get this fully on camera. This is the first two pages. This we covered yesterday. Actually, we covered it earlier in the week. And this is what we're going to cover today. So I'm putting this long enough that if you feel the need, you can stop and look at this. Um, I will also be discussing it at length. As always, while I am working with you, I am demonstrating coping skills, I am fiddling with my fingers, I'm doing all... Today, I am setting up my bullet journal for April of 2019. I uh, went ahead in between the videos and did all the inking in of the things. Didn't make too many more mistakes. Let me add some important dates. Sunday the 21st is both Easter and my youngest son Sean's birthday. I won't be able to celebrate it with him because he is in the Navy in South Carolina, uh, but I want to make sure I recognize that. The 14th Game of Thrones returns, and I love the political, geopolitical fantasy of Game of Thrones, so that is definitely going to be a part of my month that is important to me. So those are the basic things. Now, improving executive function requires that you do four basic things according to the research gathered again by Adele Diamond in the Executive Functions Annual uh, article in Annual Review of Psychology 64, pages 135 to 168. Uh, according to Diamond, in various studies that she cites, uh, repeated practice, physical fitness, language learning, and incremental increases in difficulty help to improve executive function. Before I break that down further, I want to say that when scientists and psychologists create studies like that, we use scientific language, we use um, fancy words that not everybody knows all the time, so it can be a little difficult. So I'm going to go back through that um, again really quickly. Repeated practice habit forming. Now we think of habit forming in terms of addiction. If you hear some noise off camera, what I'm doing right now is pulling out some pens out of my dual tip, dual brush hand uh, Tombows for my April month. I've decided I'm going to stick entirely to blues and greens, so I'm pulling out blues and greens. Um, so we think about it addiction. There's a there's an old acronym that I think is one of my favorite ways to help people assess whether addicted or not. Wart. W A R T. With addiction, repeated trouble. Now, I thought for a moment before getting on this video that it might be fun to create a new acronym to point out that Here we are to point out that uh, repeated practice improves lives, but that's a R-P-I-L, which doesn't spell anything. So I'm going to turn this sideways because that's the way I roll, because I write like a left-handed person even though I'm right-handed. Um, 
We want to create habits. Habits help us do things. My bullet journaling is a habit. I am not the prettiest bullet journaler in the world, but I'm pretty good about getting one done every month, which I then work on every week, and I strive to do every day. The second of the four major well-researched ways in which you can improve your executive function, which I find fascinating, is physical fitness. Now this actually makes a lot of sense because executive function comes directly from the prefrontal cortex of your brain. And if your brain isn't getting enough oxygen, then it isn't going to be as effective at doing the things it needs to do to make your life what you want it to be. So, I'm running out of light greens. I'll do the best I can here. This one may be too dark. We'll find out. So, it is probably a good practice to get into to exercise fairly regularly. Um, might be a good idea to point out at this point, and yes, I'm still looking for more colors because I think I have more light colors in here that I'm not finding, but it does. Oh, there's a lighter green. Yeah, it's kind of a brownish green. I don't like that one. Let's go to this one. It's a blue. It's a little dark. Life goes on. Anyhow, I'm going to do my highlighting now. Physical fitness can, doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be perfect even a little bit. It can help enough if you increase your activity from one minute to five minutes, from zero minutes to one minute, from five minutes to 10 minutes, from 10 minutes to 20 minutes. You remember when we talked in number four about the incremental increases in difficulty? That goes for developing the coping skills too. Coping skills take practice. They don't come naturally to a lot of us. Um, so we do the best we can to make our coping skills what we want them to be. All right, the sec third one is language learning. I found this fascinating, maybe because I'm a bit of a geek. And that is too dark. I'm going to have to look for a substitute next round. I'm going to put this one away. And that's probably even darker. Come on, something that's not as dark. Work with me here, folks. Oh, this is kind of a yellowish green. We'll try that one. Let's see. Let's put this on Game of Thrones Day and see how that goes. Now, it's not very green, but we'll go with it. Anyway. Language learning doesn't just talk about learning, you know, a second language like Spanish or French or Arabic or Chinese, Mandarin or Cantonese. I don't care. Um, it doesn't just talk about maybe learning ASL, which is an interesting kind of uh which is American Sign Language for you guys who are not in the United States, which is an interesting kind of uh, language to learn because it also involves the body, which can be very helpful. Um, it also involves things like learning music and math, both of which are languages. Let's put that Easter right there. Let's go back. So, also coding. 
So if you're learning coding because you are trying to be a better video gamer or you want to make your website pop or you want to work on your videos, those are languages. Learning those can help you in a broader sense. Finally, you want to do this in incremental increases in difficulty. It is really difficult to go from no physical activity at all to running a marathon. That's not going to serve you well. So instead, let's say you start from being almost bed bound because of whatever reason, whether it's depression or uh, some sort of physical injury or what have you, you are not going to be running a marathon in a week. So the first week you get up and your sole goal is to get into clothes every single day, which was difficult for you before, and now it's a little easier. After you get clothes, you know, you get to the point where, okay, I'm going to do a few chair-bound exercises to get my legs and my body moving. And I'm just going to do them to the point where I start to feel a little tired and I feel a little heart rate stuff going on, and then I'm going to stop. And then you go from there and you're like, okay, I'm going to walk around my apartment a little bit. Not very much, but, you know, I'm going to go to the kitchen and I'm going to go back to my couch and then I'm going to go back to the kitchen and just keep working on that improvement little by little. So that's just a small example and, of course, it's not the only example. Now, I wanted to talk... Um, about some related strategies to these four broad ways that studies have shown that executive function can be improved. There's my monthly page for April. I think it's very pretty. I will probably have more things to add. Now what I do is color each of these pages and I do it very simply. I put my dates on each part of the page. Oh, I forgot the lines here. Let's do that real quick. And then I color in the headlines and outline it in different colors so that it looks pretty. Or er, prettier. Let's face it, it's not all that pretty. Sunday, one. Whoops. It's Monday, one. I forgot I switched my week to Monday through. Okay, so mindfulness practice. Now, as you guys know, I am a DBT therapist. Um, I don't get to practice uh, a full DBT model right now because I don't have access to any groups and I can't seem to get them going. But DBT practice, even if it's not fully in line with Marsha Linehan's strategy can help a lot of people a great deal. So, I encourage people I work with to do mindfulness. And mindfulness is a lot of things, but um, the most basic is a breathing exercise or a walking exercise or any kind of exercise that allows you to pay attention to your body. One of my favorites is called um, a body check, and you would start at your toes or your head and work your way through your body to the other end and back uh, and pay attention to each part of your body in turn before going on about your day. It takes about two, three minutes, and it's a good way to start a day. Another simple mindfulness practice is to breathe in for four counts. Hold for four counts, breathe out for four counts, and hold for four counts. Now, when you do a simple breathing exercise like this and you're counting your breaths, you will often find that you are forgetting what you're supposed to be doing. And that's okay. When you lose track of what you're doing, you go back to it and say, oh yeah, I was supposed to be breathing. And so you start breathing again. Um... So mindfulness every day helps with that particular self-monitoring of stress um, issue that a lot of people face with executive function issues. It helps with 
actually reducing the stress that gets in the way of your executive function and it helps with your emotional control. So it's a very good coping skill for executive function issues. Um, another thing for executive function issues is using a timer. Um, this sounds counterintuitive, but a lot of people um, don't want to start something because they're too afraid of how big the task is. There is a wonderful, wonderful website, and folks, if you don't like cussing, you might want to fast forward a little bit because there's a cuss in the name of the web website. It's called Unfuck Your Habitat. And Unfuck Your Habitat helps people come up with ways to clean their houses. And one of the most important things they do is they teach you to do your cleaning in 20-minute increments with 10-minute breaks. Now, I'm going to go even further than that because 20 minutes and 10 minutes is wonderful if you're at that point. But if you have so little concentration that your personal rhythm is more like 5-minute work times and 20 minute break times, that's okay too. Decide what it's going to work for you and set a timer. Now there are numerous timers available online. Um, often they're called Pomodoro, which I think is a, I think is the Italian for tomato because the person who came up with the idea used a timer shaped like a tomato which is a very bizarre way to name something but hey if it works for them we'll go with it so look for a pomodoro or timer app that allows you to set a five minute timer and then a 20 minute timer or a 20 minute timer and then a 10 minute timer or five and five and 10 and 10 whatever works for you so let's say you have a huge paperwork assignment and jenny you need to be listening to yourself because hey self you have a huge timing uh a huge paperwork assignment to get done um it would be a good idea to set that timer to work for 20 minutes, take 20 minute break, work for 20 minutes, take a 20 minute break, whatever it takes to get through it. A related but not identical issue is chunking of your time. I try to, twice a month, cancel all of my client appointments and have a paperwork day. I don't always succeed, but I do try. So I will spend two days a month and I will start in the morning and I will do all my scanning and then I will do all my shredding and then I will do all my taking all those scanned files and putting them into the accounts where they belong and then I will do my remittances and then I will do any thank you letters and things like that that I need to do and then I will do my monthly accounting that kind of thing okay I've managed to lose I did it again look at that I keep wanting to start my weeks on Sunday which you know is old habit but that's okay I'll fix it so chunking you know if you're gonna have this is this is the idea behind spring cleaning you chunk all your cleaning into a two-day weekend where everybody is working and you're starting at one corner of the kitchen and working until the kitchen's done. You're starting at one port corner of the bathroom and you're working to the bathroom. I did laundry like that this week and the only thing I have left to do is pull out old clothes and donate them or throw them away or mend them because I've got some clothes that no longer fit me or are not in great repair and need to either be mended or thrown away. So chunking your time is an important executive function correction strategy. Another is visualizing. Okay, let's go back to, oh, what? Stop. See, this is where we get confused. Chunking is really good for organizing. It's really good for planning, prioritizing, and time management. It's really good for time uh, task initiation, as is the timer. Um, chunking allows you to do your flexible thinking because... When you find that you've had enough cleaning for the day, you can go, you know what? I am tired of doing dishes. I'm going to do this thing instead. 
It also works on impulse control because if you've got a day put aside to do something, you're more likely to get it done. Okay, I had to let this dry for a second. Let's try this again. In fact, I am going to chunk the rest of my month so that I don't forget what day of the week it starts on again. That one's going to have to come over here. Because for whatever reason, it doesn't want to write on the thing. Okay, so after chunking is visualization. This is, okay, here is where I am now. I want to visualize what I want it to be done. I want to visualize the steps it takes. Some people find visualizing looks is better when you literally write it down. Other people like to close their eyes and just imagine. Um, when you've got executive functioning issues, I really suggest that you probably want to write it down because that will help you keep data in your head as to whether you got it done or not and remind you of tasks that you've forgotten. Remember, I'm doing chunking now and I'm gonna go back in color later. So, I'm gonna go to Sunday. Oh, see, I did it again. This is supposed to be a Monday. Okay, I really had that in my long-term memory that the beginning of the week is a, is a Sunday. Um, but it works for me better that it's a Monday. It doesn't have to be either way. Uh, visualizing helps with working memory. I'm going to go to the store. I know, since I go to Aldi, that all of the snacks are in the very first aisle. So I'm going to grab some pistachios because pistachios have lots of protein and, uh, and healthy fats that help my brain work better. Uh, now, I don't know if there's any research that shows that eating healthy snacks helps with uh, executive function, but I find it works for me, so that's something you can try as well. Um, so I'm visualizing. I go down that aisle a little further. Oh, there's the spices. Do I need cinnamon? I usually need cinnamon, so let me add cinnamon. You know, at the end of that aisle is milk and eggs and creamer. Boom, boom, boom. Nice, easy. I already know because those are... I'm actually using the visualization of the place where I do my grocery shopping to assist me in remembering things using my working memory. Okay, I can also use it to visualize for my flexible thinking. Now, I shop almost entirely at Aldi. There's a couple reasons. One, because it's incredibly inexpensive. Two, because I like their business model. And three, because my oldest son works at the closest Aldi to my house. So um, when I go to Aldi, Aldi is known for often, ooh, look, I got it right this time, um, often not uh, having things in stock because it keeps its stock fairly low deliberately to keep costs down, which is one of the reasons it's so expensive. So I'll go in and I really, really was planning on having Aldi's tikka masala, which it, as far as... Um, Canned tikka masala is among the better ones there is. So I go in and they are sold out. Now my flexible thinking allows me to go, okay, what else is available at Aldi that I have? Well, right next to the tikka masala on the same aisle is also their various Thai sauces. They have a wonderful Thai peanut sauce. Again, it's not, not as good as homemade, but you know, my husband is largely disabled and I'm a very busy pe person, so dinner out of a can is perfectly acceptable. So I'm gonna grab some of that Thai peanut sauce. I'm gonna grab some peanuts because it tastes better when you have a few crushed peanuts on the top. And my husband always goes through the entire can of peanuts um, in between times that I do that. And I'm going to, hmm, do I want to do it with ramen or do I want to do it with rice? And do I want to do it with shrimp or do I want to do it with pork? But see, in my visualization, I'm looking at all the various places in the Aldi where I shop where those things are kept. And that allows me to be flexible. Now, the next thing is priority lists. Um, and see, I've got my work to do and home to do right here. Um, 
and this is a way out. And one of the things I like about this is as I don't do a task in an older time, I then move it over to the next one. And this is the end of that month because there's something a little odd about this month. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. I'm going to do a two page. I'm just going to do this real quick here. And we're doing priority lists. Now, every single day, if you ever go on my Facebook, my Facebook name is Jennifer Dowling Lyles. Dowling is my maiden name. Yes, I'm as Irish as they come. You will find that every day I share a few memes. A lot of them are political. If you don't like my politics, that's fine. You not only do you not have to comment on my page, you can't because I keep it locked down to friends only for very specific mental health reasons, mine and my clients. Um, but uh, on my pri every single day I do an accountability list. And my accountability list is not like most people's accountability posts. Most people just write the one, two, three, four, five things that they need to get done that day. I will talk about the things that need to get done. And I will also kind of talk about all the things that are getting in my way. And look, I got this whole big space here. I can do whatever I want with. And my phone is ringing, or trying to, but that's okay. I can hear it on my computer in the back, and I'm just going to have to check for later. Anyway, now I'm done this chunking thing. So my priority list is going to have a couple of things. It's going to have uh, the three or four things that I really need to get done. It's going to have the it's going to have the reasons that it's going to be easier or more difficult for me and it's going to have my gratitude list i find that it's useful to count my blessings ah look at all that bleeding yikes oh well life goes on um guys i have to start over again or add to this because when my client called me nine times in a row without leaving a message it caused my phone to stop recording um, if you are one of my clients that I have a voicemail for a reason please use it um, I while I didn't realize I wasn't recording I went ahead and finished all the colors except for this last page we were talking about my gratitudes list I am grateful I have voicemail because my voicemail allows my clients to reach me when I am busy. I am grateful for my Tombow markers, which allow me to make my pages pretty. Now, I've run out of things to do that I had planned to do while talking with you because I'd already finished this whole list before I realized that my client had caused my phone to stop recording. After a priority list, the next thing is partnering. Partnering is when you reach out to somebody else. Oh, these are upside down and backwards. There we go. Partnering is when you reach out to somebody else and say, hey, I need a help with this. There are two ways to find a partner. One is through natural supports, and that would be families and friends who have the capacity and desire to help you. Um, in my case, I have my best friends, Kathy Malone and Laura Dempsey, um, who help me with different things at different times. And see my list for today. It's cheating to call this a third video because it's actually only the second, but I'm going to have to splice it together. Um, it's going to be a little fun to put a title card in the middle of that. Um, 
If you don't have national supports, then reach out to professional. That means in person, reach out to a therapist, to a case manager, to a doctor, to a nurse, to somebody who is like a life coach or an educator of some variety. Or if you don't have access to that, reach out to videos like this one that can help you with the things you're trying to get done. Finally, the last of the seven related strategies we're talking about today is to create extrinsic motivations. Extrinsic is a fancy word. I'm going to go ahead and bring this down here. Extrinsic motivations, that means, um, let's put it up a little higher there. That means external rewards. Some of us, when we find we go to task motivation and self-motivation, when we go to self-monitoring, impulse control, we have difficulty managing those without some sort of external reward. If I'm doing paperwork or laundry, both of which are tasks I hate, I will often set up a video game that can be paused and restarted. Any of the old RPG games or a simulation game like um, Age of Empires or The Sims. I like The Sims, so I'll set up a Sims family and pause them, go do what I was going to do, come back, play my Sims while my timer is going for my break period, and then go back, etc. So that's a motivation for me. Another motivation is good Thai food at the local restaurant. I might use that. Um, another motivation is buying myself some sort of a treat or um, going for a walk because I enjoy it or something like that. Finally, no one of these is going to work for you all the time. You have all these things over here going on in your life. So you're going to have to experiment. You're going to have to try different mindfulness practices, different ways of chunking, different priorities lists, different ways of visualizing. You're going to have to reach out to different partners over time. You're going to have to persist. Um, at some point, I'm not going to do it today, but I want to pull up all my old bullet journals and give you an idea of how much they've changed over the last two years that I've been using them. And I have did planners before that. I was a Franklin Covey person. I've tried using OneNote online for it. Um, I've used uh, uh, Todoist and Habitica and uh, Remember the Milk, all of which are excellent online programs to help you organize. And then Evolve. Um, you figured out that this and this works for you, but not this. So you cross off this and you do this and this. That goes back to this incorrect incremental increases in difficulty. As you get better, you're going to want to have a little bit longer mindfulness practice. You're going to want to have your timer be 20 minute um, work, 10 minutes break, or five minutes break instead of uh, 10 and 10. You're going to want to have your chunking um, more frequently or less frequently. Um, you're going to have nested priority lists as you get better at this. You're going to partner with more effective peeper, people over time. You're going to have extrinsic motivations that are for bigger goals. So all of this is going to help you. Um, this is it for, for this episode, and hopefully we will get this out later in the week. And when I say we, I mean me. I am using the royal we. Uh, remember that I'm available on patreon.com backslash J-L-I-L-E-S. And if you want to one-time tip me, my PayPal me is paypal.me backslash J-E-N-N-I-L-I-L-E-S. Thank you so much for listening. Um, my next video after this one, before I go back to the third one on the executive functioning will be uh, one that's purely politics, dealing with some of the stuff that's happened in the last week. Uh, talk to you later. Um, please subscribe or at least leave a comment and let me know what you think. Thank you.